call them what you will, strimmers, line trimmers, brush cutters, weed whackers, if yours is battery operated and it stops working, I may have a simple solution to get it going again. Alrighty then, welcome back and thanks for checking in with me, Nathan, here at Lewis Garden Services, based down in sunny South Wales. Uh, I hope you're all doing well, having a fab day and uh, life is treating you kind. Now, battery strimmers, there's lots of models out there from lots of manufacturers, I'm guessing they're all kind of the same thing. I'm not really technically minded, but you either put a battery in them, or in this case, you put the cord in there to power it. You've got a motor that turns the shaft, this motor and this battery and this trigger are connected by a whole bunch of wires. So we've had real dry conditions here for the last couple of weeks and this still FSA 130 has been doing fine but on a Friday I cut some real long grass maybe two or three foot in dry conditions and on the Monday it wouldn't work. The symptoms for not working was basically run for less than a minute then as you feathered the throttle or the trigger it started stopped stopped and then stopped completely wouldn't work. So the first thing I tried was replacing the backpack battery with a smaller one in case there was anything wrong with the terminal that goes in. If you had one with a battery that plugged in, I would probably have tried a different battery to rule out that. Okay, this didn't solve the problem. Now to me, it felt like a connection issue. This port here, not sure if you can see. If I can give it a wiggle has got a bit loose over time. So the first thing I did was take this apart to check the connections in here. Now generally on the still stuff, all the small screws release the case in, the bigger screws keep that case on the shaft. So I just took the smaller screws off, this came apart, fairly simple, looked in there, all the connections looked fine, there was no shorts with any of the wires, so ruled that out, put that back on. I've been in the motor end previously. There's a video I put out where the magnets in the rotor there, a couple of broken, so I just pulled them out and it carried on going. Same thing here, smaller screws took the case apart. The bigger screws, a couple of them, hold the motor to the shaft. Okay, so I took it apart and inside there was a lot of dust and debris. I disregarded that initially, just blew it out to check the cables, check the connections, they all looked fine still wasn't working okay so it was still exactly the same fault i then took the end cover so this cover there's another cover in there that covers the back of the motor took that off no real wires or cables in there but had a look the one thing that did stand out there was all that rubbish and the dust that was on the inside of it was also on the back end and it was like a greeny browny polleny dusty thing and it was stuck to everything blew it off it was still there so I thought right that must be the issue as in it's just not making contact enough as it's going around so got a WD-40 I didn't know whether this was going to work or not work WD-40 brush sprayed it in give it a brush got most of that gunk off and it worked and it's still working fine now so if you're running a battery strimmer trimmer line trimmer whatever you want to call it and for it just stops working and you have been in dry conditions check it for dust it's pretty easy for me to take these things apart. They're not under warranty. I've got nothing to lose. But if you are using a machine that's under warranty, you may want to take it back to the shop. This still model has a sticker right over the join in the casing, which you have to cut to get in there. So if you did get in there, it was under warranty, and then you took it back to the shop, they would say, listen, your warranty is void because you've been in it. And we don't know what you've done, so obviously we can't look after it. So if you've got nothing to lose, take it apart, look for something that's obvious in the connections or the wires. A simple solution for me was that it was just full of crap, full of dust, that just wasn't allowing those connections to go in. If that's been of any help to you or you find any of this battery gear interesting or just generally what we're going up to here at the channel, it'd be great if you could um, subscribe and like the video. Thanks for checking in. I will catch you next time. You take care.